Welcome to Substation 33, where we'll teach you to take this and turn it into a 3D printer. Let's get started. All right, so that's what the incomplete version looks like. Just up to the heat bed and the Y-axis still to assemble the X-axis, which goes across here, and the extruder sub-assembly. And this is a complete version. Give you a look at the cabling for the Y axis. So the cables, you can choose to either use cable management, um, cable ties I mean, or you can just twist it around. It looks very neat if it's twisted properly. And that's the motor these little clips we use to manage the cables along the bed this is a little auxiliary connection for drawing power 5 volt or 12 volt to any any peripheral item you want to. in this case we have a fan cooling the Arduino or the ramps rather and the fan that cools the extruder is also permanently attached via 5 volt connection to this auxiliary port so, that's so for the next part here you probably want to familiarize yourself with the chart of parts so you know which parts I'm referring to as I call them out so you've already done the heat bed, you've done the y-axis and you now need to include this entire x-axis as well as the extruder assembly so I'll advise to assemble the x-axis off the entire full assembly so assemble that separately and then put it on to the z-axis after which you can add these cable ties so you don't you don't have to remove these rods anymore after you've put the x-axis on and you've inserted the z rods into the x-axis to keep it locked in place then you can permanently secure your z-axis with the cable ties to do the x-axis by itself so excluding the extruder Exclude as well this tension cable at the back here. So you'll notice you've got tension cable, crimps for tension cable, and tension springs, which came with your X axis sub assembly uh, in the kit. And just to point out, instead of these crimps, you actually got a different type of crimp. I'll just show you on another printer. So you've got these, which are well, we'll call them cable couplings for the time being. And yeah, that will act as your crimp. Yeah. So just to reiterate, instead of using the standard crimps, which you don't have, but it's over here. So that's a standard wire crimp. So it's just a piece of metal which was squashed around these uh, tension cables. Instead of using that, we're using these. Or we've given you these ones. So you have to avoid these screws coming in contact with the cables so that they don't catch. Devise a little contraption, maybe just using the cable ties or anything you have lying around really to try and avoid the cables coming into contact with this crimp. If you can't find anything, we'll try and supply you with something. And after that, so now you're looking at assembling the x-axis, this is the x-idler, right? The bearings on the side over here, so this, this whole thing can be, the x-idler can be prepared before putting it onto these two rods. So you, you want to drill out these holes for the bearings, 3 millimeters, and then screw your bearings in with the 16 millimeter M4 self-tapping screws. If the screws don't go into the bearings very easily, you might have to give it a little tap to go through the bearing. Uh, after that, install the idler screw itself. So that's an M4 bolt. I think it's 30 millimeters. And on the back of that is an M4 nylock nut. You have two washers, one on either side here and three bearings in between the two washers. That screw is on. These bearings need to roll freely. Uh, this part of the X idler needs to be cleaned out 
or gouged out with something, either a screwdriver or a deburring tool, if you have a deburring tool, to allow the rods to move freely inside of them. After that, you can insert these two rods and insert the other end into this part. So to prepare this part, that's the X motor mount. The motor is mounted onto the back here. Four bolts which go into the motor. So these are four M3 bolts. So one, two, and three on the inside and four up there on the inside which hold the motor onto the motor mount. These holes here are to access those screws in case you've already put this front panel on. Okay, so put your motor on, then get this on, two M4 screws there. Clean out these two holes, same as the other side. All right, so we've mounted the X motor and to secure this front plate for the X motor mounting, you need to use these two M4 screws as well as liquid ABS. So liquid ABS is a combination of acetone and ABS. You mix that up and paint it on. That'll glue this front face on. Underneath this here, uh, the motor mount as well as the idle mount on the other side, there is a nut, an M6 nut, which rides on this M6 threaded rod. And that is what actually shifts the axis upwards. After you get these prepared, Insert the X rods, which are 340 millimeters. So insert them into each of the mounting, and you should still have a bit of play. You've got your X axis on connected to your Z axis with the rods slipped in. You're going to add your tension cables as well as the tension uh, springs and the crimps, and then secure the uh, to secure the mounting with these screws, these M3 screws from top and bottom. The GT2 pulley belt, GT2 belt and pulley on the other side allow the, the carriage to go back and forth. Uh, to adjust the tension on that belt you can slip it off this idler. And to adjust the tension we we'll slip it off, pull these together, pull it off, it's going to be really hard to get back on now, and adjust it one notch, so adjust it however many notches you need to um, increase the tension, and once you've adjusted it, slip it back into place, so that goes up the top, this goes on here like that. Secure that with a screwdriver. Flathead screwdriver should help. Okay, you get the idea. So you insert that in, push it all the way in, and then slip it back onto, and ride it on as well. There you go. And that's for that. And that's obviously after you've put the extruder carriage onto the X axis. So to assemble the extruder carriage separately, you have the, the X carriage, which is this part right here, it's called the X carriage. And then you have the extruder body, which is this chassis in the center. But that goes on with four bolts. It's uh, four M4 bolts. One is 30 millimeter and the other one's 40 millimeter, I believe. And M4 nuts on the other side. Um, six M4 bearings to allow the, the x to ride on these rods. Uh, proximity sensor mounting which gets glued onto the extruder. Extruder motor which is mounted with three small M4 bolts again or machine screws, 10 millimeters. Heat sink uh, gears. So these gears, or the first one here, is secured with a grub screw onto this motor shaft. So there's a flat on there, the grub screw driven onto the flat of that shaft. Uh, and these two gears need to line up so that they run smoothly. This gear here 
is held in place by an M8 bolt. So an M8 bolt goes all the way through and that's the head of the bolt. That bolt is what actually drives the filament down through the hole between the hob section of that bolt and the sparing. So that bolt gets inserted all the way through the, the extruder chassis and it's spaced by a few washers, so M8 washers. We've given you a choice of quite a few washers so you can space it out until that hob section is in the center of that hole so that the filament goes directly into the hole. To secure it is an M8 lock nut on that side. Uh, you don't want this to be too tight. Just leave it, tighten it up and then pull it back just a notch just to allow it to ride freely and also so it doesn't allow play but it's still not completely tight. These M8 bearings are pressed in so you can press them in with a clamp. Uh, that's another M8 bearing here and an M8 steel rod which is cut to short length just to get inserted into this part is called a guide lock. Uh, that's also pressed in so you can press these two ends in with clamps as well. At the bottom here is the extruder hot end which is held on by this fan bracket. So the fan shroud which allows the air to be directed over the heatsink also doubles as the clamp for the extruder hot end. Proximity sensor is mounted onto the proximity sensor bracket. I mentioned it earlier but we didn't get to see how it's actually glued on so that is glued onto the bottom edge of the it's glued onto the bottom edge of the extruder chassis. Well there is only one bottom corner, the bottom right corner of the extruder chassis to which the proximity sensor bracket can be secured to. And uh, basically covers it. So that's an X end stop switch. That's the X end stop bracket which is glued onto the bottom right corner of the X motor mount. So to, to glue that on use super glue. I believe we've actually given you super glue to do that. So there's a little tab yeah. it allows it allows this carriage to hit the X end stop switch to adjust the the, the home position. So this uh, the guide loop pivots on, on a 30 millimeter M3 bolt. So once you have uh, in place with the uh, pivoting correctly with, with the M3 bolts uh, everything's on then you want to apply compression onto the filament going through between the bearing and the hob section and that's done with these two screws with compression springs and that's an M3 60 millimeter bolt so two times that the M3 nuts that go into there two M3 mod guard washers extruder springs and that screws on and uh, that's what grips the filament as it goes through all cables coming from the extruder carriage are coupled to this uh, cable management steel cable which runs all the way along here so it runs all the way along into its own mount and it's separate to the cable management for the bed just because this is higher and yeah, that's cable tied along. Again, you can twist it if you want, or you can cable tie it along the length of the steel cable. And that's to keep it away from uh, hitting any switches, interfering with anything else, really. Uh, so the purpose of the steel cable management is to keep it from hitting anything else, as well as to prevent the wires from bending repetitively, so as to break over time. So. So this is the complete uh, ramps board with everything connected to it. Um, you don't have to arrange the cables exactly the way they are, but you can follow the schematic that we've given you so that you'll know exactly how to plug it in. Yeah, if you have any, if you have any questions, just just give us a call, send us an email, and we'd be happy to help. Thanks, guys.
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.